First to take them on today is Vashti, with a collection she hopes will sit well with the dealers. I found them on an online auction site, and I really, really like them. I have done some research on the items, but I haven't been able to find out too much, so I would like to find out more. Before entering the bidding room, Vashti's having her items valued by Simon, who's been an auctioneer for nearly 30 years. I think they're stylish, aren't they? They are, aren't they? Must have a set. I like the form of the leg as well. Actually, I like the whole thing. I do too. I think they're great. I think we need to find out where they're from. We do. We do we indeed. Must ask Vashti. Vashti. Hello. Welcome. Thanks. Tell me all about them. Where did you find them? I found them on an auction site and I really love them. How long ago was that? Probably about five years ago. And how much did you pay, if you don't mind my asking? £160. And have you been using them? I have. But now you're selling them because? I've moved house and they don't fit, they unfortunately. Don't. Right. Shall we ask our expert, Simon, to tell us all about them? Yes, Because please. he's an expert in these particular chairs. Really? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Aren't you, Simon? <laughs> I'm as surprised as you are. <laughs> no, they're great, great. And I'm, I'm glad you bought them to use as well. Because, oh. you know, so many people buy things just to sell on straight away, don't yeah. they? Or just, yeah. But you've, you've used them. And I can see why. Because um, the shape is just wonderful, isn't it? I'd, I'd call them cafe chairs. They look like that sort of style, don't they? You can imagine with your cappuccino in yeah. one of these, yeah. Um, the, the first name that springs to mind is a chap called Oswald Hertel, who grew up around uh, Vienna. Right. And he, he became a very well-known designer, well, and architect, actually. Early 1900s, 1910s, wow. 20s. Is there a maker's mark on, on them? Not that I can see, but it's, right. it, but it's, the, it's the shape and style, Nigel, to be right. honest, more than that. He moved on to a company called Thonne, who who produced these chairs from his designs, basically. But by this time, 1940s maybe, Thonne were mass-producing what we call bent wood furniture, which is basically a process where you bend rods of wood by the use of steam. I think this fabric is probably not I the original. Them. Yeah. You did that? You did, did that. that. Well, that's fine. You did that's good, fine. You yourself? Yeah. Oh, you did a good job. That's fine. And probably the original is still underneath? This isn't. Yeah, well, yeah. that's great. You've chosen well. The grey sort of does, it lifts them a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it just lightens them a bit, yeah. doesn't it? And what, what are you looking for to get today? Well, from my research, um, they look like they're worth around £1,000 in good condition. But I don't know. Right. They've got lots going for them, which mm -hmm. is a good, which, which is the good news. Um, and condition, actually, you know, is used, but good. I think Vashti's four figures are, it might be a little optimistic, to be honest. But I, I think in, in this condition, um, in front of the trade, 500 is, is, a, is a fair figure. 500. Are we happy with that? I'd prefer more, but... I'd prefer more. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> now, before you go in, it's just good, good to know all the, all the bullet points. Of, okay. of, of, of Bullet points. Well, I mean, there's, there's lots, really. Mid-century, nice design, Thonne, um, you know, good maker, bent wood. I think they're about 1940s. Um, but you know exactly what they are, so just push them. Are you happy with all that? I am. I have a feeling that you're pretty good at this, and I think you'll do better than 500. Let's see. <laughs> Good. And the very best of luck. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I do feel confident going into the dealer room. Simon told me that the chairs were very desirable, and I think because they're so desirable, I may be able to play them off against one another and start a bid-in war and try and get as much money as I can. Buoyed by Simon's valuation, Vashti heads to the bidding room, where her chairs might well appeal to mid-century specialists Lucy and Moses. What's your name? My name is Vashti. Hi, Vashti. Hi, Lovely Vashti. to meet you. Hi. Hello. Hi. So, we're wondering what's under here. Shall I reveal? <gasps> Do the honours. Yes, please. <laughs> oh. Ooh. They're rather tasty, aren't they? I want to eat them. So, where did you get these from? I bought them from an auction site. So. For a good buy? <laughs> Reasonable. <Cheap>. <laughs> <laughs> I love the black legs on them. Possibly 1950s? Not quite. They're 1940s. The actual design of those, though, is way ahead of their time, I think. 50s and 60s is where you find, like, your atomic ebonised legs and splayed supports and stuff, so they're really advanced, I'd say, for that, for that age. Could it be designed by Ludwig Volak? 
Oswald Hurtle designed them for a company called Thorne. Thorne is a really interesting company. There's quite a history for Thorne in mid-century. It's, it's the start of mid-century. I have to say, they are so classy. Really, really elegant. I'm going to tell you how comfortable it is. Hmm. It's not as comfortable as I thought, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. But do you know what? The feel of the wood is really nice. And I actually quite like these. Uh huh. Is yes. that comfy? <laughs> um, I wouldn't use the word comfortable. <laughs> I'd use the word uh, there's room for improvement. Hopefully, that reflects in the price. <laughs> I really, really love them. Just might change the upholstery for the comfort value. Well, they are very desirable. They are. Because mid century furniture is really hot right now. You're right. And Perfect. also, the original vinyl is beneath the fabric. They're also a really good designer and a good manufacturer. You've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> good work. <laughs> so, who's going to start the bidding? The four mid-century chairs have been valued at £500. Over to Vashti to see if she can sell at that price. I'll kick off the bid and I'll start it at £100. £150. You would pay that for one single chair? I could do better than that. Okay. £180. I could do better than that. £200. £210. £250. Really? <laughs> Set of four. £265. That's very precise. 280. I'm out. Oh, really? I love them, but they're going to cost a lot of money. Sorry, I'm out. OK. That was a stern no from you at 280. Are we, are we quite far away here? You are. Really? Yeah. To me, that seems quite expensive for what it is, so I'm going to be saying that I'm out. I'm going to join Melissa, but it really baffles me, because all I ever hear is how expensive mid-century furniture is, and yet nobody seems to want to pay. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Three... fifty. There's not one chair, two chair, three... There's four! Come on, Moses! Knock at the door at 400! Come on, Moses. Actually, after careful consideration, mm -hmm. I'm out. Oh! Oh, my cheerleading wow. was rubbish. I'm as shocked as AD, to be honest. I can't believe it. I, I think really that's flabbergasted. Best piece of mid-century we've had to, eh? I'm surprised. But I'm at 350, but that's about my limit with those. That's unfortunate. I can go to... And this will be the last bid. Yeah. I could go to £450. If you go to 500 I, I will... I honestly can't, cos I think... I'm going to have to spend a fair amount of money, but at 450 I think that is my absolute limit on that. And to be quite honest, I could be completely wrong with him. He's being generous. I honestly I think. think 450 is the absolute top I can do there. I'll take your offer then. Oh, Fantastic. brilliant. Wow. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Out of interest, what did Simon value these chairs at? 500. Yeah. 500, yeah. And what did you pay for them? I paid 160. Well done. Oh, wow. That's a good markup. Well done, you. Thank you very much. It went really well in the bidding room. The dealers all really liked the chairs. JB bought them in the end. He paid £450 for them. It's only £50 under what Simon said that they were worth. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I really love those chairs, so I am really sad to see them go because I love mid century furniture. But with the money, I'm going to buy something else mid century for my new house. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. So what are you going to do with them? I'm going to get them completely sanded so they're a light grey and then get the black vinyl put on and then sell them as desk chairs. I'll tell you what they would do. They'd make fantastic snow plows on your drive and then they would get rid of the varnish at the same time. Well, would you want to buy one? No. <laughs> Hello, you gorgeous dealers, you. Hello, Nigel. Nice. I've been Hello, singing Nigel. your praises all day. Look at these lovely chairs. I'm going to sit down in one of them, see what it's like. Deeply uncomfortable. Don't say that. <laughs> no, it's not really. It's actually, it is deeply uncomfortable. But that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is that they're sort of gorgeous to look at. I like them. What do they go for? Four fifty. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing because it's a joke, but I think it's a good price. So <laughs> did Simon. Well, I think it's brilliant. I think you'll you'll do fine with these. Well, now you're signing them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Up next is David, with something he hopes will speak for itself. This item was made in the 40s, brushed aluminum, a real mid-century modern space age look to it. I think you know what this is. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Mm. Lovely condition as well, don't you think? Pretty good. It's brand new. It's mm. fantastic. And it's got a name on it and a lot of wire. <laughs> <laughs> and some buttons. Let's get uh, David in and have a word with him. Hello, David. Hello. Thank you for bringing this little thing along. When did you get hold of it? Uh, a gentleman uh, worked in a factory in my hometown in, in Canada, uh, knew that I collected some mid-century modern type things. Um, and they were throwing it in the bin and uh, asked if I wanted it. So I took it and I've been using it as decor ever since. Sure. I mean, in a factory, it might have been used to call people. That's what I imagine it was. Um, you know, it was uh, used for an outside page type yeah. of thing, you know, looking out a, yeah. in a tower of some sort. Uh, that's how yeah. it was sort of... You should wonder, uh, could David please come to the reception area, please? Immediately, thank you. <laughs> Anyway, we've got Simon here, who's an expert, and he'll tell us all about it. Simon? Company named Telex, which were uh, a, a, an American company, and, the, and this was their desktop paging microphone. More than its, its use, I, I just, just love the shape. Yeah. That, that's what strikes me straight away, is the form and the, and the design. It's got that sort of 40s look almost, doesn't it, really? Yeah. I just love that, that fin on the yeah. top. Well, I thought really Thunderbird... Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have five minutes to launch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's great, absolutely great. And in what we call brushed aluminium. Yeah. Condition is everything with these, Nigel. And, yeah. and, and this is absolutely, well, I'd, I'll, I'd, I'd even go as far as saying mint condition, really, because yeah. it's, it's that good. I can't find any faults with it, really. And do you know what? I'm, I think David will easily see between. <laughs> 70 to 100 pounds. That sounds great. Fantastic. He needs to push the points that we know it's Telex, an American company, classic 40s, maybe into early 50s. It's a desktop paging microphone, but the design will sell it. Yeah. Straight away. Fingers crossed. Exactly. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, great thing. Absolutely yeah. great. The valuation went really well. Nigel and Simon has really given me a lot of information about the item and hopefully that will drive the price up. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at that. Isn't that great? Nice, isn't that? Can I ask you what your name is, please? I'm David. Can you tell us a little bit about where you got it from? Sure, actually, I got it uh, probably about 10 years ago. A gentleman that I knew was working in a factory that was closing down and uh, he thought I might like it and when he showed it to me I was like, yeah, it's perfect. So you say you got it from a factory, so I imagine it was in like the manager's office shouting orders to his staff over the intercom. That's what I imagine. Shouting at lazy workers. Possibly. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, I'm not looking at anyone in particular. <laughs> it's quite a heavy little thing actually, that. Moses, stop slouching your tea break under ten minutes ago. You better get back to work. <laughs> JB, wake up! <laughs> AD, you're fired. Hooray! <laughs> David, this is a very good item and I hope you're going to be selling it to me. Very cheap. We'll see. <laughs> what is it, 60s or something? 40s, they say. It's 40s, yeah. OK. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't... Oh, no, it's post-war, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. The thing that I love is it's, it's really aviation sort of style and that's why you've piqued everyone's interest. Have you ever found out the maker of it? Nigel and Simon had told me that it was uh, from an American company, telecommunication type of company at the time. Oh, that makes it even more um, yeah. romantic. I like it. I work, just a bit of upside, I work off an old RAF base. So that would look fantastic. If you get it. I don't think you need that item, though, Aidy. Your voice is loud enough. Fog on, leg on. It's <laughs> <laughs> the nicest thing you've ever said to Aww. me. So you've clearly piqued everyone's interest in here, so I think we should kick it off. The 1940s microphone has definitely got the dealers talking, but can David push them to, or even beyond, the 70 to £100 valuation? 40 quid. 50. 60. 60. 70. 80. 90. 100. I'm out. Are you? Yeah. 80 really wants it. 110. No, 100 was my limit. Even though you work on an RAF base? 120. 
I haven't really heard too much from this side of the room. You know, as much as I love it, I don't think it's something that I would buy. One thirty. Hmm. One forty. Oh, I knew it. He really wants it. One fifty. No, one fifty-five. Five. Fix all over now. One sixty. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> David, I'm going to tell you where I am. I love it, but I'm out. Sorry. I'm out. I suggest you don't try and do a deal on this, because my top bid <laughs> is 160. <laughs> I'm gladly accept your bid. Oh, wow. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> David, I have to ask, what did Simon value it at? Uh, he said 70 to 100. It's lucky well, I'm, done, lucky I'm going to keep it then. <laughs> The uh, overall experience in the bidding room was amazing. I ended up making 160 pounds, and since I uh, got the uh, item for free, you know, I'm very happy with the outcome, and I'm going to put the money towards some good things. What are you going to do if you're winful? Well, I'm going to put it some towards uh, my new startup business and some towards a bottle of scotch. David, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, everyone. All right, thanks. I love it. 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 Morning, campers. Heidi, hi. Heidi, hi. AD, do you receive me? Over. <laughs> I'm losing you, AD. Over. <laughs> Next up is Neil, known to his friends as Boothie, with something he hopes will make the cut. The item I've bought in today came out of a butcher shop in London, and it's over 100 years old. I put my head on the block <laughs> and say, yeah, I think I know good. what this is. Very know. good. It's been used for its original purpose I as well, hasn't it? Imagine. This is not an item for a vegetarian. No, definitely not. No. Absolutely not. I love them, though. Uh, let's ask Boothie, who's here. Yeah, for a bit of info. For a bit of info. Boothie, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. And thank you for coming into the bidding room. Not a problem. Give me a little bit of a background about this. I acquired the block of interest, because I used to be a butcher in a family butcher shop. You did? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my mother and father started the business off in 1952, unfortunately. My mother passed away in 1995, and I became a partner with my father, yeah. and we worked side by side in harmony, and then he retired. Then I took the business over, but unfortunately, in 2004, I suffered a um, a very big stroke, oh, which sorry, led yeah. me to closing the business down. But I've always had an interest in butchering, and I saw this butcher's block and I acquired it from a gentleman who said it was his granddad's butcher's block from London. I've sold many a many butcher's block over the years of various sizes. Yep. And this actually is, is one of those ideal sizes because, you know, you don't need a huge space to fit this one in. Typical construction. We've got the big blocks on the outside and then many usually end grain boothy, aren't they, for to keep the strength, the blocks okay. of wood. Brilliant pieces and built to last and, you know, I mean, this is goodness knows how old boothy. It could be 100 years old, couldn't it? Yeah. Probably is and, and will probably last another good 100 years plus again. The market really loves this kind of thing. Really? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a great item to take next door. Boothy's going to be able to push the fact that it's a great size. It would fit in a house setting as well as in a, a larger room setting as well. It's collectible, it's what the market wants. And, you know, I, I think Boothie's gonna see, I'm gonna say in that three to 400 pound bracket. Okay, so you go in there, tell them the history of the piece, and uh -huh. I think you'll do really well. Mm. So, best of luck. I think the valuation went very well. I feel very confident going in front of the dealers. I don't like losing, I like winning, so I'm not prepared to lose. Hi, Rudy. Good Hi, name. Hello. Hi, good to meet you. So, obviously, you bought us a blanket in. Correct. <laughs> Shall we have a look? Yeah. You ready? Dun, dun, dun. It's a oh, yeah. Good guest That's team. That's beautiful. That oh, that's nice. gorgeous. It is, isn't it? It's a lovely yeah. table. This is really fashionable at the moment. 
the whole 20th century rustic look oh, yes, they are. is pretty massive. It's a fantastic size. It's a shame about the, the piece that's been added to support the table. Actually, it's been, for me, it's been overly oiled. Usually like to see the patina of the wood come through. I love it. I don't care that it's been re-oiled and stuff. To me, it's just a fantastic height. It's a great piece. I, I, just, I just love butcher's blocks, end of story. But I buy the big ones. Why do you have a small one For like that? one space. Back in bygone days, butcher's shops were all small, wasn't mm. they? OK. They're not like they are today. All right. So, so this will be at the front of house more than the yeah. back? The main butcher's block will be in the background. Well, that'll be there for... The smaller bits. ...salesmanship or whatever. Oh, OK. There is a really good market for this. You can use it in shops, for shop displays, interior homes, uh, period properties. Just as a nice little feature. What I've done, I've bought the item, right? Anything above what, uh, what I bought it for, I'm going to donate back to the Stroke Association. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. fantastic. Really great. It's so, a really good cause, then. Yes. OK, so you've piqued all of our interest. We've touched on the points that it's got. It's a nice thing. I think we're all pretty interested in it, so who wants to kick off? So, there's lots of interest from the dealers, especially Moses. Time to see if they'll match the three to £400 valuation. Well, chop, chop, I'll bid £100. £110. £130. 140 150 160 170 and 180. 190. 200. 220. 230. 240. 250. Hmm. 260. 265. 270. 275. 280. 290. That's me done. I'm out. Don't you dare. 300. I'm going to say I'm out. I am out on this one. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just let it go. So Moses is at 300, and I think I'm going to let him have it if he pays more than 310. <laughs> Moses, are you in or are you out? I'm out at 310. So. Um, the offer is at 310 with me. Do we have a deal? We do have a deal, yes. Fantastic! Hey, yes. Brilliant. <laughs> I've got to ask, what did Simon value it at? Between three and four hundred. And what did you pay for it? I paid 230 pounds. So you made a profit! Yeah. Wait, I, have, I haven't finished that. I paid £230 for it in Plymouth, but to get it from Plymouth oh. up to where I live, it cost me £70. £300 in it, so the £10, I'll double that. If you all put £10 in, yeah. so that's £70 to the association. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic idea. I'm sure all the dealers will throw in another £10, and really best of luck for the charity. Thank you very much. A £10 donation from each of the dealers on top of the sale price means a total of £70 goes to Boothie's chosen charity. The overall experience was something very memorable, most enjoyable. Next up is Anne, with something she thinks will brighten up the bidding room. It caught my eye um, because of the shape and the design. I haven't seen one before or since. It's been part of my home for the last 15 or so years. It could be a cake stand. <laughs> it could be good, it's, yeah. That's a little row of cupcakes all yes. row, yes, yeah. Or is it a light? Hmm, could be. Reminds me, style-wise, of one of those, one of the Lazy Susans. Yes. Mm. I think we have to ask Anne. Hi. Hello, Anne. What have you bought us today? What is it? Um, a lampshade. It's a lampshade. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find it? I bought it about 15 years ago in an antique store. Date-wise, what do you reckon? No, I'm, I'm thinking 60s. 60s, yeah, 60s 70s, early 70s. Early 70s. It's got that sort of going-on vibe. Is it from a boudoir? <laughs> it could be. It's got that sort of pinky tinge to it, hasn't it? Yeah. All in perspex, which is uh, quite unusual. When I first saw it on the table, and I, th I thought this might be glass, 
and the rest would have been um, perspex, but it's all perspex. And I quite like the um, the way they've etched this sort of geometric mm. circular design all the way around, which is quite nice. Actually, they're yeah. quite practical because they're quite lightweight, yeah, um, durable. You know, this one's lasted a good. 50, 60 years now, yeah. isn't it, at least? So I've looked everywhere. I can't see a maker's yeah. mark on it at all no. or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's British manufacture. Have you ever seen one before? Yes, to be honest. And quite a few of this sort of shape. It's quite often called a UFO shape. Right. Because it remembers... Yes, I was sort of thinking those satellites sort of... Uh, yeah. yeah, it resembles shape. a sort of yeah. flying saucer a bit, it's doesn't fun. it? It's mm. fun. Uh, collectible. Absolutely, yes. It suits that retro yeah. uh, market, doesn't it? Classic British design. I think actually Anne's got a nice little item, you know, to take next door. It's mid-century, it's perspex, classic design. It'll appeal to a number of the dealers. And do you know what? I'm, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 40, 50 pounds. Let's have a little summing up from Simon. Push the fact that it's classic mid-century, perspex, British design, and it's Funky. It's funky. If you make some money, what will you what will you do with the money? Um, put it towards another light, possibly. It's a very bright idea. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck in the dealer's room. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah, I quite like it actually. You, it's growing on you. It is. It is. Growing it's like on a blamange, <laughs> boudoir lamp. Blamange. I haven't heard that word for <laughs> a while. I was pleased that they were interested in my item and I hope the dealers will think the same and will offer me accordingly. Hello. Hi. Mm. Hi. Very nice. Well, I wonder what this is. <laughs> Flying saucer. <laughs> it might just be a lampshade. So, Anne, just to clarify, <laughs> you actually went into a shop and chose this. Yeah. <laughs> well done, you. Well done, you. <laughs> he is so cheeky. It's not his style, obviously. AD really only knows about teddies, trains and a little bit of French furniture, but very, very small amounts. You're all assuming I don't like it. I see perspex and plastic. It looks uh, late 60s, early 70s. What age did Simon put on it? Simon thought the 60s, maybe early 70s. Um, it looks complete, but to be honest, it looks like uh, one of those pieces that someone would do in a garage. A kit? A kit, yeah, that's the word. They had a lot of kits in the 60s yeah. and 70s. People don't realise, do they? To me, it doesn't look like a, a manufacturer's piece. Did Simon have any thoughts about who might have actually made it? No, he didn't, but he did think it was English. As our mid-century mid dealers, experts of not really said much to give you a bit of a up boost. I'm going to because it's pink and right now pink is right in, certainly in what I do. I don't do this sort of stuff, but... You can um, always start. It, well, <laughs> it, it's nice because of the colour and I quite like it. I like the colour because it matches my dress. It does. <laughs> to be fair, I think it would make a really good hat. You could try it on, see if it fits. I can because just see you at the races now. I know. I know. I'm very, I'm very. Being tired. a bit shady. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we try it on? You break it, you buy it. <laughs> you buy it, you break it. Look at that. It's like you're going to Aintree. Oh, Look at that. Look at that. Yes. It's yours. Fantastic. <gasps> You have oh, got to... Look, seriously, Melissa, you've got to buy that. that it is just yours. suits look. your outfit perfectly. <laughs> well, I hope you're all interested in my light. I think it's very now. I think it's quite um, on trend for the moment, the, the style and design. And the individuality, I think, goes for it. Come on, everybody. I think this is a really different item and I think it suits a lot of you. So I think we need to get some bidding doing, don't you? The retro lampshade has put a twinkle in the dealer's eyes. It's valued at 40 to 50 pounds. So, will any of them pay that kind of price? Well, I'm going to shock everybody and start at oh, one what? pound. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I will go five pounds. I'll go 10 pounds. 15. 20. I'm not bidding, I'm afraid. I could not steal that away from you, Melissa. It's just too perfect with your outfit. I'm sorry, I'm out. I'm very sorry. Pink's not my colour, really, so I'm going to say that I'm out as well. But thank you. It's definitely not your colour either. No, it's not. So 
I think I'm going to offer you 25. I'll go 30. It is a great talking piece. You're not going to see another one like it. So. Mm. Go with your French furniture. Mm. <laughs> Oh, and I'm going to go out, I'm afraid. OK. So, Anne, I am bidding at 30. Would you accept 30? Could you go a little bit more than that? I can't, really. I What's... think I'm at where I want to be with it. 35, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Don't go me. any more than 35. It's yours. It suits your dress. So, come on, are you in or out? <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm offering you 35. It is going to come home with me. Oh. I'll do 40, but that is it. Right. That is it. Thank you, Melissa. I will take your £40. Well, thank you. Well, it's gone to the best home. Well done, Melissa. You've definitely got yourself a new hat for the races there. <laughs> We look forward to seeing you. <laughs> I know, definitely. Well, thank you very much for that, Anne. I appreciate thank you. it. What did Simon value it at? They said 40 to 50. Oh, bang on so the money. I was happy with the 40, and I'll put it to something else in the house at some point. I'm happy with the result. So what do you think? Does it suit me? Forget the cake, Sans. I think you should yeah. be on top of the cake. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I'm like so a little sweet. dolly. Puzzled by her purchase, I felt compelled to enter the bidding room, to ask Melissa why. You really bought that? S yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Something went wrong, didn't it, really? It did. But so what are you going to do with it? We have discovered it does make a really good hat, so maybe for Ladies' Day. <laughs> do a look dashing now. I can just no, say I'm it sorry now. to say this. <laughs> you look fantastic in she that. She does, doesn't she? Oh, you really you. do. I mean, is it heavy or is it OK? Could you wear it all day? Oh, do you know, it's OK. I might get a bit necky, but... I think it's great. You could have a battery-operated illumination. I, I can even have some cupcakes in it, so when I'm hungry, I can just go... <laughs> 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 I've got, I've got more a, money than I've sensitive. I've got a very good um, psychiatrist I can recommend. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye. Last in is Delia, with something that she hopes is on track for a great sale. The item was given to my brother for a Christmas present um, around about 1972. It would have been seen as a classic boy's tie. It's what it is. <laughs> That's an electric train set. Or train électrique. Train électrique, sorry. So it must be a French company. I think we're French, aren't we? Yeah. Definitely. Is it made by Joe? <laughs> yes. How would you pronounce that? Because Joe. It... <laughs> Hello, Delia. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Look what you've bought in a little train set. I have. A little tiny, compact French train set. I can remember my brother being bought this in 1972 by our grandparents. He did play with it, but I don't think very often because it is in quite good condition. He's broken the controllers from what I can see, but it does work. Ish. Yes, <laughs> it jutters along. Well, it's a life of its own. Well, no, a great little, obviously, circular track. And with a lot of these, as with many other types of train sets, you could add to the track as you yeah. went along. You could buy straight sections and all the rest of it. Original box, which has is, which is survived very well. And then the plastic um, battery housing there. Shoof now are actually owned by Hornby. Hornby distribute them in the UK, but mainly, obviously, in France and, and Europe. Um, are they called Hornby Jouf? <laughs> <laughs> they should be. If they're not, they should be. It's early 70s, yeah. basically in good working order. It'll appeal to, obviously, any tra model train uh, enthusiast mm. and, and Hornby collectors as well, because you've got that connection. Yeah. It's a difficult one to judge, because I know my market for Hornby collectors, and this is slightly different in a way. I don't think it's in that same league, personally. Okay. But as it's so complete and in working order, Got to say, I wouldn't be surprised if it did the 40, 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. Key points are, well, Delia, you pronounce it a lot better than me, but Zouf, keep emphasising Zouf. The fact that it's a complete set, which yeah. is good. If they can't guess the date, then tell them, 1972, mm -hmm. no doubt. Uh, and the fact that it's in working order. OK, thank you very much. There you much. go, you must steam into the dealer's room. <laughs> 
and just get as much as you can. I will. Thank you, Delia. Very best of luck and goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm pretty chuffed with how the valuation went. Um, it's supposedly £50, so we'll just have to wait and see. Fueled with insider knowledge, Delia is going full steam ahead into the bidding room, where she'll meet a new lineup of dealers. Joining JB and AD is 70s kitchen admirer Estelle, lover of the unusual Joe and interior design fan Tash. What's your name, please? Uh, Delia. What have you brought us today? Uh, I brought a train set that was my brother's. It's got the original box. It works, um, and it's made by Juf. 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 French. Hey. Oh. I like it because he it's likes, French. He likes France. Not because it's a train. Set. Well, because it's a train set. I mean, it's and it's round and it's battery and I can take it anywhere. Two things you should know about AD. One, he goes on about France because he's obsessed with it and goes all the time. And the other thing is that he is obsessed with toys too. OK. Delia, but the problem is everybody keeps outbidding me <laughs> on my toys, so I need help from you today. OK. Now, I will love it, treasure it. I go to France every week and I can put it on the ferry and I can just annoy everybody. Well, you annoy everyone anyway. <laughs> no, no, I don't care. You don't care, do you? I want it. So model railway goes back to the tin-plated stuff. I'm assuming this is plastic, so obviously it's the more yeah. modern stuff, so you had your Hornby trying, etc. Yeah. No, it's a lovely little set, it's good fun. Um, is it broke here, or is this...? No, it's, uh, it all together. connects together and You really haven't works. had a train set, have you? I've never had a train set, no. PS1. It's a chance. Delia, do you remember him playing with it? Once or twice playing with it. Right. But he's not a, a train set. Person. I think kids must have been a bit bored in that day. It's literally all it does is just go round and round. Yeah. But what and that it, is it. What it would do is you could buy other pieces to yeah. it. So you could buy straights and bridges and you yeah. could actually make that into something a lot bigger. And as well as that, that would interact or interchange mm -hmm. with uh, Hornby. This, let me tell you, in 1972, was the bee's knees. You'd I'd rather a, just a football or a rugby ball. Later. You would make little stations yes. and, and little men and with exactly. sticks and, and little trees AD. with cotton wool. Yes. And, AD, cotton are wool. you trying to tell me that you made little figures and hand-painted figures? There is absolutely no chance that you did that. Can I tell you now, my train set looked really rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, a starter kit, though, as yeah. you're saying, that you buy yes. other pieces. All of them come round with the locomotive and the couple of carriages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you go into the, oh, my God, I want to get some more. And then you, then you build loads and loads of stations and towns, and the train goes from one oh. town to another and oh, goes over the bridge. How do you know all this? I've got a train set at home. <laughs> <laughs> Have you? I do. Have you got signals and all that? It's got, it's got it's a whole country. Do you play with it? Sometimes Is I it do. For sale? Right. right, then, shall we... Uh, less chat, more bidding. The vintage train set has been valued at 40 to 50 pounds. Now it's all down to Delia's haggling skills. Shall we start the bid at 10 pounds? I'll go 20 pounds. Delia, can I just say that I'm out, but thank you for bringing it in. Yeah, thank you. And Delia, I'm the same. It's just not my sort of thing. <laughs> Cute <laughs> little grin. <laughs> it's like the cat that got the cream. 25, Delia. Any more? Sorry, Delia, I'm out. OK, thank you. Estelle, this is 70s kitsch for you. It's not kitsch enough, mate. I don't deal in toys particularly. Neither does AD. <laughs> he just <laughs> no, he buys, buys them. them. <laughs> he plays with them. So I won't be bidding any further. So the bidding's with me and you don't look very happy. <laughs> Is that not what you were after? Was you after much more? Yeah, more than that, yeah. 30? More than that. Ooh. 40 pounds. Slightly more. I'll pay you £50 pounds for it. OK. Hey. Fantastic! Yeah. I got a train set! Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So Delia sells the train set at the top end of Simon's £40 to £50 pound valuation. A great result all round. 
good bidding. In the end, it just was Eddie bidding against himself, and he's going to take it back to France. Enjoy the juice. I will. Hey. I will enjoy it. Absolutely. <laughs> Lovely. See you Thank again. Sorry. Bye. 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 And I feel really, really happy, and I hope Eddie plays a lot with it. I love it. Oh, that was, you could do my voiceover, and so when I'm playing with it, I can just keep putting it on, and Joe goes, do it again. Oh, do it. Oh, look at this, I've got... Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>